uh, you know, we're still relatively new for me. Um, I mean, again, anyone who's been following me uh, will know that I, I first started to buy my crypto, my uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum back in around the middle of February, uh, middle of February 2021. Uh, and I bought, uh, you know, I was, I was buying in uh, Bitcoin at about twenty-seven thousand pounds was that that was the, that was the kind of average price when I started buying, uh, and Ethereum, I think was from memories around thirteen hundred pounds, eleven hundred pounds at that time. Um, and again, anyone who's paid anything more than a modicum of interest to uh, to crypto prices over over, over the last uh, you know, three, four, five months has known that you know. We've had a massive, massive bull run, and thanks to a tweet from Elon, fallen off a cliff. Again, you know, it's it's, it's down to a bit more than obviously just just a tweet from Elon. Um, but I think you know the 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 the, the people. There's, well, there's a few stories, there's a few messages from me here. Um, first of all, to be very clear, you know, I I am educating myself in let's say in in crypto in de in decentralized currencies in decentralized concepts as a whole uh, and buying with a long term with a long term view that these these currencies these technologies are where the future is at not not with a view that t tomorrow is necessarily the price is going to be better than it was today or you know that that, that I, I can make a trading profit out of these i absolutely uh, don't profess to know enough to trade uh, i would argue uh, does anyone really know enough to trade and and, and that tr traders are nothing nothing more than gamblers um and you know look um, there's a time and a place to gamble but you know for me it isn't uh, you know it, it isn't with you know large por portions of my my personal portfolio but what i i do very very strongly believe in is is where where the you know where the concept of um decentralized non-government intervened technologies and, and currencies are going um, and you know you know do i think bitcoin is going to be a currency of the future i don't know uh, i mean you know, w w without, without question you know there are go there's going to be winners and losers in this space and and digital currency will be the future um, like I say, I'm not sure whether it will be Bitcoin itself, but I do very much believe in Bitcoin as a concept of of a, of a, of a store of value and of a place to keep, you know, a portion of my personal wealth, my portfolio. Um, but um, you know, and again, I think I always want to try and tell you guys some stories that can try and hammer home some points. And again, you know, for for, for you guys who are um, who are fighting against um, the the onset of crypto? Who don't believe that's where uh, you know that's where we're going in the future? I want to tell you two things that have happened to me this week. One is uh, I've probably spent uh, nearly fifteen hours in the last week or so talking to banks. These are, these are banks that our businesses already deal with about the most minor and mundane shit really uh, you know problems on a banking mandate uh, you know a, a bank account being locked because you know there's been a change of a company director uh, you know just ba basically the inability to access our own money that is that's that's in these accounts you know to be, to be able to make necessary payments in the day-to-day -day business um, and you know, like I said, you know, the amount of time I have had to waste on that is absolutely frightening. Another thing, a, a personal uh, matter, you know, a couple of days ago, I was here in France. I was off to playing a poker game. I've got some, uh, I've got some UK cash sterling with me. I wanted to change a thousand pounds into whatever the whatever the euro equivalent was. Probably not much better than a thousand euros. Um, and I walked for nearly 90 minutes around town to find, first of all, to try and find a bureau de, de change that was open, then to find one that was, you know, that actually had any money in it, then to find one you're at a rate that was acceptable. It was the most mind blowing process concept. And I actually ended up not even changing the money in the end because by the time I'd found someone who did have some money and would give me a rate, a rate which was disgusting by the way, but by that point I'd just walked around so much, I was like, I'm done in, just, just give me what you got. Um, it, this was about two o'clock in the afternoon and the lady said I'd have to come back in two and a half hours time when they got the money together. I mean, 
it's a bureau de change, surely. <laughs> and I'm in France. Their, their, key, their key currency has to be euros. Uh, and she wants two and a half hours to rustle up a thousand quid for me. It's just staggering and mind blowing. Um, and but for me, all of these, all of these issues, you know, all of these stories, you know, go more. Um, you know that, that they they indicate that you know ultimately people are going to give in on these centralized systems, on these systems that are reliant on legacy, you know, legacy rules, legacy processes, governments, uh, you know, uh, regulatory bodies, etc. Uh, you know, and 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 and. Yeah, there's already there's already enough people you know fighting about it. I mean that's why we now have the you know the challenger banks you know and and you know people talk about you know I mean challenger banks have been around for I don't know 10, 15 plus years. You know your likes of your Oldermores, your Santander, uh, sorry Santander's, Shaw, Shawbrooks. Now you know one step further with your Monzos and your Starlings. These banks are there to there to challenge the status quo you know of the of the big four. You know the the the, the incumbents that have have given bad service with bad technology, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And don't get me wrong, you know, a lot of these banks have served a purpose in maybe giving easier accessibility to, to, to lending or, you know, a better customer services hotline or something. But none of them, none of them are really revolutionary. Um, and, you know, as consumers, you know, whether that's personal or business consumers, we still very much suffer the problem of, you know, being able to get someone to answer the phone in a timely manner, being able to get an appointment, being able to open an account, you know, the, the painful dance with KYC, you know, know your customer, you know, your passport, your driver license, etc. cetera. Um, you know, and then getting the account open. And that's before we talk about lending. I mean, nothing I've been talking about here has been, I've been talking about struggling to borrow money, just accessing our own money, being able to transfer our own money. So like I say, whether or not this steers to a Bitcoin future, I don't know, but what it certainly does to me is steer towards a you know a, a blockchain decentralized future away from you know away from regular well, not necessarily regulation but certainly away from intervention.